Koda. Koda. You okay? Say hi. Say hi to the vlog. I'm gonna get ready before I even like vlog anymore because I actually look like a piece of crap. Like literally, if you look up a, what does a piece of crap look like, you'll probably see this image. <laughs> Bless you. Good morning guys. Today is a fun day for two specific reasons. Number one, Starbucks just came out with their holiday drinks, so I'm about to go grab one on my way to school this morning. I'm literally so excited. Hi little co-bud. Um, and number two, today is the Encounter um, Film Festival, so it's going to be really cool. So if you guys are like new and you're like, what the freak is Encounter? Encounter is the youth ministry that I help like lead. Uh, I wouldn't really say lead is the right word for it. I help uh, work with the students, but uh, the students are like family. So it's basically just like family reunions every Thursday. It's gonna be really freaking fun. Only thing that's like crazy is I, nobody, is I have class. Um, <laughs> oh, wee! Okay, here's Coda, cause he's not calming down. I'm in the middle of something! Show them your behavior. A few hours later. I'll talk to you guys later um, because I really have to go to school. Okay. Bye, guys. Allie left her camera at my house. What a loser. Allie smells like poo and looks like doo doo. But I like to make her feel loving. She ain't a queen. But she is mean. I love Allie. I like her in. Uh. It's Encounter hey. Film Night. Ooh, and uh, we are. <laughs> guys, everyone, outfit of the days. Outfit. Are we telling you where it's from? Yeah. Okay, uh, my mom's closet, but Jessica Simpson. This is nice. my uh, Windsor. It's my 16th birthday dress. Decided to wear it, because you know. Beautiful. Um, Her Windsor. Watch. Nails, I don't know. I don't know where my mom, probably Dillard's. And then, I don't have a necklace on, but. Beautiful. Oh, TJ Maxx, earrings. Of course. Okay. Windsor. Hi. Windsor, Who's American Eagle. Outfit? My mom's okay, shoes. Altered State. Okay. Target. I love the shoes. Oh, Target. Hey! That's it. Allie's That's turn. It. TJ Maxx. Okay. Marshalls. My mom's closet. Uh, like Claire's. <laughs> uh, what else? Elevated Faith. That's it. She's done. I'm we done. wear our mommy's shoes. Nothing. I'm done. We only wear our mom's shoes. That's it. We are the only ones who dressed up. Everyone else sucks. And they just wear PJs. Literally all the guys are on PJs except for like five of them. And we literally spend like hours getting ready and then they just show up like that. I literally spent like... last night getting ready. That's why my hair's wavy. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Not, not even going to lie. It's looking a little fancy in this building. Wow. We got the screen up here. Encounter film award show. This seat's taken. No, this seat's taken. <laughs> the first video award that we are giving away, uh, this was originally supposed to be a film festival. It turned into a film festival with other awards. But the first video that we're going to watch, it's because it's so inspiring. Uh, so this video goes to, it's from Amy Brandfast, and this is the most inspiring film award. So turn your attention to the screen, and we're going to watch Amy's video now.
Alright, while he looks for his Bibles, this guy knows who has the Bible in every translation. Back to the Bible. A few hours later. Alright, the person who wants to be here the least of work goes to Luke Ross! I'm not sure he wants to be here tonight. Catch. Alright. Go to church. Go to church. Let's go. Go to church. if you guys like this outfit like maybe just something fancy for school or work just kidding to be honest with you guys i just finished an italian quiz after the award show and everything and i was like um i don't know if this video really has enough substance to just post because it literally was just like random clips at the film festival and like half of them you guys are probably going to be skipping past because you're like uh, what's even going on? But I'm gonna keep them in there for memories, because whatever. But, um, I recently just read a book in the Bible, and it really, really spoke to me in, like, certain times, and just kind of, like, keeping myself in check, um, for things that I was doing that maybe weren't the best. Um, and nothing, like, crazy, but I just keep myself, I hold myself to a really high standard, um, when it comes to morals, and so, um, just sometimes I'm like, what am I doing? Like, why am I being like that? So, I read the book of James and I really liked it. So, I thought I would read it to you guys because it's really short. Um, but I took a lot of notes um, in it and I love... Some people are probably like, oh my gosh, you write in your Bible? I love writing in my Bible. <laughs> so, um, it's probably going to take me like 10 minutes to read. Um, so, if you're not a believer and you don't want to watch the rest of this video, that's alright. But if you are, or you just are like, oh, let's just hear what the Bible's about, then stick around, because it's literally just going to take me like 10 minutes, and um, it's a really good book. So, again, this is the book of James, and I'm literally just going to read it. Hopefully we get no interruptions, but we'll see. Chapter 1, uh, James, a servant of God and of the Lord Jesus Christ, to the twelve tribes dispersed abroad, greetings. By the way, I might not say like all these words right. <laughs> I don't know every word, so... Trials and maturity. Consider it a great joy, my brothers and sisters, whenever you experience various trials because you know that the testing of your faith produces endurance. And let endurance have its full effect so that you may be mature and complete, lacking nothing. Now, if any of you lacks wisdom, he should ask God, who gives to all generously and ungrudgingly, and it will be given to him. But let him ask in faith without doubting. For the doubter is like the surging sea, driven and tossed by the wind. That person should not expect to receive anything from the Lord, being double-minded and unstable in all his ways. Let the brother of humble circumstances boast in his exaltation, but let the rich boast in his humiliation, because he will pass away like flower in the field. For the sun rises, and together with the scorching wind dries up the grass, its flowers fall off, and its beautiful appearance perishes. In the same way, the rich person will wither away while pursuing his activities. Blessed is the one who endures trials, because when he has stood the test, he will receive the crown of life that God has promised to those who love him. No one undergoing a trial should say, I am being tempted by God, since God is not tempted by evil, and he himself doesn't tempt anyone. But each person is tempted when he is drawn away and enticed by his own evil desire. Then, after desire has conceived, it gives birth to sin, and when sin is fully grown, it gives birth to death. Don't be deceived, my dear brothers and sisters. Every good and perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of lights, who does not change like the shifting shadows. By his own choice, he gave birth by the word of truth, so that we would be a kind of first fruits of his creatures. Hearing and doing the word. 
My dear brothers and sisters, understand this. Everyone should be quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to anger, for human anger does not accomplish God's righteousness. Therefore, ridding yourselves of all moral filth and the evil that is so prevalent, humbly receive the implanted word which is able to save your souls. I love that. I underline that like five times. But be doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving yourselves. Because if anyone is a hearer of the word and not a doer, he is like someone looking at his own face in a mirror. For he looks at himself, goes away, and immediately forgets what kind of person he was. But the one who looks intently into the perfect law of freedom and perseveres in it is not a forgetful hearer, but a doer who works. This person will be blessed in what he does. If anyone thinks he is religious without controlling his tongue, his religion is useless and he deceives himself. Pure and undefiled religion before the God the Father is this, to look after the orphans and widows in their distress and to keep oneself unsustained from the world, or unstained from the world. The sin of favoritism, my cousin's favorite word. My brothers and sisters, do not show favoritism as you hold on to faith in the glorious Lord Jesus. For if someone comes into your meeting wearing a gold ring and dressed in fine clothes, and a poor person dressed in filthy clothes also comes in, if you look with favor on the one wearing the fine clothes and say, sit here in a good place, and yet you say to the poor person, stand over there, or sit here on the floor by my footstool, haven't you made distinctions among yourself and become judges with evil thoughts? Listen, my dear brothers and sisters, didn't God choose the poor in this world to be rich in faith and heirs of the kingdom that he has promised to those who love him? Yet you have dishonored the poor. Don't the rich oppress you and drag you into court? Don't they blaspheme the good name that was invoked over you? Indeed, if you fulfill the royal law prescribed in the scripture, love your neighbor as yourself, you are doing well. If, however, you show favoritism, you commit sin and are convicted by the law as transgressors. For whoever keeps the entire law and yet stumbles at one point is guilty of breaking it all. For he who said, do not commit adultery, also said, do not murder. So if you do not commit adultery, but you murder, you are a lawbreaker. Speak and act as those who are to be judged by the law of freedom. For judgment is without mercy to the one who has not shown mercy. Mercy triumphs over judgment. Faith and works. What good is it, my brothers and sisters, if someone claims to have faith but does not have works? Can such faith save him? If a brother or sister is without clothes and lacks daily food, and one of you says to them, Go in peace, stay warm, and be well fed, but you don't give them what the body needs, what good is it? In the same way, faith, if it does not have works, is dead by itself. But someone will say, You have faith and I have works. Show me your faith without works, and I will show you faith by my works. You believe that God is one. Good. Even the demons believe, and they shudder. Senseless person, aren't you willing to learn that the faith without works is useless? Wasn't Abraham our father justified by works in offering Isaac his son on the altar? You see that faith was active together with his works, and by works, faith was made complete. And the scripture was fulfilled that says Abraham believed God and it was credited to him as righteousness and he was called God's friend. You see that a person is justified by his works and not by faith alone. In the same way, wasn't Rahab the prostitute also justified by works in receiving the messengers and sending them out by a different route? For just as the body without the spirit is dead, so also faith without works is dead. Controlling the tongue. A lot of you guys need to hear this one. I probably, I'm not saying like just you guys, like I needed it too. For, I don't swear, but like I say things I don't mean all the time. Not many should become teachers, my brothers, because you know that we will receive a stricter judgment. For we all stumble in many ways. If anyone does not stumble in what he says, he is mature, able also to control the whole body. Now if we put bits into the mouth of horses so that they obey us, we direct their whole bodies. And consider ships. Though very large and driven by fierce winds, they are guided by a very small rudder wherever the will of the pilot directs. So too, though the tongue is a small part of the body, it boasts great things. Consider how a small fire sets ablaze a large forest. And the tongue is a fire. The tongue, a world of unrighteousness, is placed among our members. It stains the whole body, sets the course of life on fire, and is it self set on fire by hell. Every kind of animal, bird, reptile, and fish is tamed. It has been tamed by humankind, but no one can tame the tongue. It is a restless evil fully of dead poison. 
With the tongue, we bless our Lord and Father, and with it, we curse people who are made in God's likeness. Blessing and cursing comes out of the same mouth. My brothers and sisters, these things should not be this way. Does a spring pour out sweet and bitter water from the same opening? Can a fig tree produce olives? My brothers and sisters, or a grapevine produce figs? Neither can a salt water spring yield fresh water. The wisdom from above. Who among you is wise and understanding? By his good conduct, he should show that his works are done in the gentleness that come from wisdom. But if you have bitter envy and selfish ambition in your heart, don't boast and deny the truth. Such wisdom does not come down from above, but is earthly, unspiritual, demonic. For where there is envy and selfish ambition, there is disorder and every evil practice. But the wisdom from above is first pure, then peace-loving, gentle, compliant, full of mercy, and good fruits, unwavering without pretense. And the fruit of righteousness is sown in by peace who those, by those who cultivate peace. Sorry, I'm getting a little tripped up now that I'm like going on. I'm not gonna lie, this is taking longer than I thought. Oh wait, it's not gonna be 10 minutes, guys. It's gonna be like a little longer. <laughs> Just hang on, okay? I got like two pages left. Proud or humble? What is the source of wars and fights among you? Don't they come from your passions that wage war within you? You desire and do not have. You murder and covet and cannot obtain. You fight and wage war. You do not have because you do not ask. You ask and don't receive because you ask with the wrong motives so that you may spend it on your pleasures. That is a really good verse. Like really, less. I'll read it again because it's really good. You do not have because you do not ask. You ask and don't receive because you ask with wrong motives so that you may spend it on your pleasures. We ask God for so many things and then we get mad when he doesn't give it to us. But we ask him for something that does not have to do with something that has to do with the kingdom. We ask him for all these earthly things that are like not important at all and just like almost selfish and materialistic. And God's like, seriously, like you could talk to him about whatever you want. And if you really want to ask him for something, you can. But we don't ask for the things that we should be asking for most of the time. Most of the time we're asking for things that really don't matter. He still listens, but if you get mad at him because he doesn't give you what you asked for, there's a there's a reason for it. He's just not, he's not tuning you out. He's just, he knows best. You adulterous people, don't you know that friendship with the world is hostility toward God? So whoever wants to be the friend of the world becomes the enemy of God. Or do you think it's without reason that the scripture says, the spirit he made to dwell in us envies intensely, but he gives greater grace. Therefore, he says, God resists the proud, but gives grace to the humble. Therefore, submit to God, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. All of this book is so good, I just have to say. Because I'm going to keep stopping and be like, oh, I love this part. And you guys are going to be like, shut up, just keep reading. But like, I just, this whole book is so good. Uh, draw near to God and he will draw near to you. Cleanse your hands, sinners, and purify your hearts, you double-minded. Be miserable and mourn and weep. Let your laughter be turned to mourning and your joy to gloom. Humble yourselves before the Lord and he will exalt you. Don't criticize one another, brothers and sisters. Anyone who defames or judges a fellow believer defames and judges the law. If you judge the law, you are not a doer of the law, but a judge. There is one lawgiver and judge who is able to save and to destroy it. But who are you to judge your neighbor? Come now, you who say, today or tomorrow we will travel to such a city and spend a year there and do business and make a profit. Yet you do not know what tomorrow will bring and what your life will be. For you are like a vapor that appears for a little while, then vanishes. Instead, you should say, if the Lord wills, we will live and do this or that. My grandpa does that always. Lord willing, Lord willing. He adds that to everything. But as it is, you boast in your arrogance. All such boasting is evil. So it is sin to know the good and yet not do it. <sighs> Warning to the rich. Come now, you rich people. Weep and wail over the miseries that are coming on you. Your wealth has rotted and your clothes are moth-eaten. Your gold and silver are corroded and their corrosion will be a witness against you and will eat your flesh like fire. You have stored up treasure in the last days. Look, the pay that you withheld from the workers who mowed your fields cries out and, out and the outcry of the harvesters has reached the ears of the Lord of armies. You have lived luxuriously on earth and have indulged yourselves. You have fattened your hearts in a day of slaughter. You have condemned, you have murdered the righteous who do not, who does not resist you. Waiting for the Lord. Therefore, brothers and sisters, be patient until the Lord's coming. See how the farmer waits for the 
precious fruit of the earth and is patient with it until it receives the early and the late rains. You also must be patient. Strengthen your hearts because the Lord's coming is near. Brothers and sisters, do not complain about one another so that you will not be judged. Look, the judge stands at the door. Brothers and sisters, take the prophets who spoke in the Lord's name as an example of suffering and patience. See, we count as blessed those who have endured. You have heard of Job's endurance and have seen the outcome that the Lord brought. The Lord is compassionate and merciful. Above all, my brothers and sisters, do not swear either by heaven or earth or with any other oath, but let your yes mean yes and your no mean no so that you will not fall under judgment. Is anyone among you suffering? He should pray. Is anyone cheerful? He should sing praises. Is anyone among you sick? He should call for the elders of the church and they are to pray over him, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. The prayer of faith will save the sick person and the Lord will raise him up. If he has committed sins, he will be forgiven. Therefore, confess your sins to one another and pray for one another so that you may be healed. The prayer of a righteous person is very powerful in its effect. Elijah was a human being as we are, and he prayed earnestly that it would not rain, and for three years and six months it did not rain on the land. Then he prayed again, and the sky gave rain, and the land produced its fruits. My brothers and sisters, if any among you strays from the truth, and someone turns him back, let that person know that whoever turns a sinner from the error of his way will save his soul from death and cover a multitude of sins. It only took me a little longer, a little longer. Guys, I just love that book so much. There's so much good stuff in there and you may have totally skipped past this part, but like, I honestly would love to do this kind of stuff. Just like read something. You can listen to it while you're getting ready in the morning. Just get a little bit of the armor of God on you. Listen to it before you go to bed, whatever, wherever you're at in your day. But um, I just love that. There's so many truths in there. And I love that James like addresses us as his brothers and sisters because like that's what we are. Um, we're one huge family. Again, a lot of really good truths in there. Um, it was good to have like a refresher. I read this last, uh, literally one week ago from today and it just like is really powerful. And so I'm really glad to like read it again. But anyways, my camera's going to run out of room. So I love you guys. I'm going to either edit this tomorrow or maybe edit it tonight, depending on my energy. I'm pretty tired, but, um, I hope you guys had a wonderful day. I can't wait to take this makeup off. I actually look so bad right now. I just read the Bible and I'm like being mean to myself. That's sorry. Anyways. Oh my gosh, that's cold. Okay. I'm going to go. Bye guys. Love you.